Ah, greetings and salutations, my excellent friends. Welcome once more to the Chi Ranger Podcast. My name is Steve Miller, your host, the Internet's Chi Ranger. And this, of course, is episode number 10. And as I mentioned last week on the podcast, this will be an abbreviated version of the regular podcast because of all the things that are going on here in Korea as we wind down the academic semester and I move on into my little summer vacation here coming up at the first week in July and oh I am totally totally jazzed about that looking forward to it but before we go on into the news this week do want to mention that if you go over to the show notes on chiranger.com, you can take a look at the content rewind, some of the links to the big articles and videos this past week. But the one news story I want to talk about this week comes from the United States and is, of course, regarding the massive wiretaps that have been disclosed. Now, a lot of people are up in arms about this, and I think rightly so, because this is a huge invasion of privacy. But a lot of people are also attacking the Obama administration, and while that those attacks, I think, are, I don't want to say warranted, but are justified, a lot needs to be put into context. And one of my biggest frustrations with the Obama administration is that he was originally elected on a platform of change. And since coming into office, he really hasn't repealed a lot of the Bush administration's policies. And this type of wiretapping was first implemented during the Bush administration. And I was really opposed to it back then, and I'm still opposed to it right now. The way that the FISA court has been manipulated and changed to allow greater access to our personal information in the United States uh, since 2001 has really eroded at our personal freedoms. And it's really unfortunate that President Obama didn't follow through on his pledges to repeal that, again calling on quote-unquote, national security concerns to warrant such what I think are, and many others think, are unjustified wiretappings. The notion that any point, at any time, that the government can just go ahead and conduct a warrantless wiretap is frightening. It is absolutely frightening. But the United States probably isn't the only country that does it. I'm sure that most governments around the world will do these types of activities in the name of public security and won't disclose exactly what happens unless they get caught. Now, this particular whistleblower, or as many people are calling him a traitor, is in a lot of hot water because he did have top secret clearance and did disclose this information. And he will probably be charged with treason or some cor some kind of crime against the state because he did violate that top secret security. Uh, there were certainly other avenues that he could go through to make the information known. And many people also question why he went to Hong Kong. He, he listed out his reasons. But if I was going to expose something on this scale, I would never go to a country that had an extradition treaty with the United States. It was a really bad call on Mr. Snowden. So, yeah, it's a, a big mess. Lots going on. You know, here in South Korea, we have limits on free speech, and that's one of the videos, I, uh, blog posts I, I made this past week, because here you have the national security law, which pretty much states that if you say something that's not in the government's interest or try to promote North Korea in some way that the government doesn't agree, you can be fined or jailed. And then you really don't have any free speech here because if you say something that quote unquote defames someone else, even though it's factual information, you could face litigation as well. So uh, a lot of attacks on free speech around the world. So those are some of my thoughts on that. This week, that is all the news I have because time is of, uh, I should say, why just really crunched at this time of year. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the travel segment. 
but to learn more about what's going on in the area, be sure that you're following me on Twitter or Facebook because I do post a lot of stories there. You can also keep up with me on both my YouTube channels. All those links are in the show notes. And if you have any questions, please send it to me at questions at chiranger.com. Now for Take Me Away. Now this week we're going to Chungcheon. And this was featured a while back on TBS EFM, Out of Bed with Travis, which you can hear live between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. on TBS EFM. That's 101.3 in Seoul. So here we go. <laughs> everyone it is a magnificent monday morning another week and another opportunity to share with you some of the great travel destinations around korea and this week we're going to focus on one of my favorite places to kind of escape to when i'm here in the seoul area especially in the fall time so it's great to go up there during the summer because it's very very close but in the fall the colors really come alive and that is Chuncheon. I love this place. It is the capital of Gangwon province, and the city actually lies in a basin formed by the Soyang River and the Han River. And in the multitude of river and waterways around the area, you have all these small islands in the rivers. And it it gives you an opportunity to really have some great adventures by going out and seeing the water and traveling to these small areas to have a, a few picnics and to have some excursions. And it also is the home of Nami Sum, Nami Island that was made famous during the filming of the popular Korean drama Winter Sonata. And it's also the hometown of one of Korea's most famous soccer players, Son Hyung Min, who plays in Germany at the moment. But when I think about Chuncheon, there's one thing that comes to mind, and that's duck galbi. I love duck galbi. Now, if you're not familiar with duck galbi, let me tell you about it and why I love it so much. Now, the city, Chuncheon, was well, pr primarily known for chicken farming and was gained notoriety because of duck galbi or chicken ribs. And what they would do is they would take Chinese cabbage, some sweet potatoes, some tuck or rice cakes, some scallions, and mix the chicken meat with some spicy, some savory sauce. And that became Chuncheon version of Dakalbi. Now today, rib meat really isn't used to create the dish, but it's still a great, great spicy dish. And in fact, there's actually a whole street devoted in Chuncheon for just Dakalbi. And I really didn't even think about this, but years before I came to Korea, I was actually making that galbi at home because I love spicy chilies. I love making stews. And at home, I would take various chickens. I would skin them and then cook them up because I live close to a farm. And I would make my Americanized version of duck galbi maybe 10 years before I even came here. But if you go to Chuncheon, and you want to have the authentic dakalbi, there's one thing you need to be aware of. And that is a lot of times they have a tourist version and a local version. So if you are a foreigner going to Chunjan, a lot of times they may think that you can't handle the spice. And if you're like me who grew up in the American Southwest who thrives on chilies, I want that authentic Chunchan Dakalbi flavor. I want that extra heat, so you need to ask for it. Now, as far as getting there, there are a lot of buses that travel up that way, but one of, I think, the most scenic ways to go is on the ITX, the Intercity Train Express. Now, this is a special rail route that goes between Seoul and Chunchan, and 
it's one of the most cool trains out there because it's one of the few that has two levels for it. And you get to sit up top and watch the scenery pass by. It is a fantastic trip. And it's actually very cheap, only a few thousand won. And then as soon as you arrive in Chuncheon, you're there at the the train station. And if you want to go to some other places around there, there's a bus terminal close by and you can certainly make your way on there. But Chuncheon is full of wonderful places to go and foods to eat. It is a lot of fun. So when I come back tomorrow, we are going to talk about Nami Sum, which is probably the one thing that most people in the Seoul area go to that city for. So stick around and I will be back tomorrow. Good morning. I hope you're having a fantastic start to another great day. Now, like I mentioned, we are talking about traveling to Chuncheon this week. And probably when that name comes up in conversation, it's always associated with a beautiful scenic setting and that is Nami Island, Nami Sum. And that was predominantly featured in the very popular Korean drama, Winter Sonata, back in 2002. And even more than a decade later, a lot of people remember it, and a lot of people have very fond memories of it. And in fact, when you go to Nami Island, you can actually see a lot of the locations where it was filmed. And I want to focus on the history of Nami Island and what you can experience when going there because I've been there twice and both experiences have been different and both experiences have been memorable. And one of the reasons why is that Nami Island is a place that you can go back to time and time again and have different memories, different experiences, but they will all be Awesome. Now, Nami Island was formed as a result of the construction of the Chungpyong Dam, and it's really uniquely shaped. They say it's the shape of a half moon, and it's also the gravesite of General Nami, who led a great victory against rebels in the 13th year during the seventh king of seventh king uh, reign of the Chosen Dynasty. That was King Sejo. Now, Nami Island is about oh, a little over an hour from Seoul, and it is famous for its beauty. And one of the things that is absolutely stunning there are its tree-lined roads. And the reason why it's so famous is because they have different varieties of trees. And like I said, one of the best times to go is in the fall because the trees just turn an amazing color. When my wife and I were there a few years ago in the fall, it was right as the fall foliage was making its splendid arrival in Gangwon province. And we were there, it actually had rained in the morning. So these golden leaves were just lining the streets. And my wife is a shutterbug. She has her camera all the time. And she got some of the most amazing pictures. And even me, with my little smartphone camera, I was able to capture some great ones too. But what really made it special is that as the leaves were falling down, it was like a colorful snowfall. But the caretakers of the ground were taking the leaves and instead of making piles that we would jump in, they were making heart shapes on the ground. And then couples like my wife and I or other couples could take beautiful pictures and share the experience with their families. Now, one of the things that is kind of unique about Naima Island is that it is an island. It's, it's there in the waterways and you have to get there. So there's a few, I guess, different ways. Most people take a small ferry ride, and it's maybe 10, 15 minutes. It's not very long, and you just go across from the ferry terminal right to the island, and you have to pass through a little immigration area that's kind of like you're going to a ferry land. Now, for the more adventurous individual, you can actually take a zip line from Gapyong and sail across the water and in onto the land itself. But if you go there, it's really, really easy in terms of traversing the waterways. So if you're worried about water, if you have a fear of swimming, if you think you're going to get seasick on a boat, don't worry about it. It's very calm. It's very smooth. It's not 
any kind of you know, dangerous or, or any kind of tumultuous travel. Uh, on the island itself, there's a lot of places where you can stay overnight. So it's a very popular retreat for couples who are looking for a romantic uh, getaway for a weekend. It's a great time. I really recommend it. So make sure that if you're looking for a very special, even if it's just a day trip for a very special romantic getaway, Namisam is probably one of the best places to go. That's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow with some of the food and festivals that you can experience in Chuncheon. Hey, everyone. On Monday, I introduced Chuncheon and, of course, Chuncheon's famous Dak Galbi. But there's one other food that Chuncheon is known for, and that's makguksu or buckwheat noodles. And this is a great, great dish, and it's served up a variety of ways. And like Dak Galbi, there are a number of restaurants in the city where you can get this, but there's even a little culinary museum that you can actually go to and learn how to make the noodles. And I have to say, out of all the dish- dishes that That are served with these buckwheat noodles. I think mine is, again, a spicy dish. So lots of gochujang, lots of meat and vegetables. It is so good, so tasty. And if you're thinking of normal kalguksu, the normal knife cut noodles, these that are served up here in Chuncheon are very thin, but very long, and of course, very tasty. So that is another. Preeminent dish in the area. But let's talk about some of the festivals that roll through. Now, currently taking place through uh, from the 19th all the way up to the 26th of this month is the Chuncheon International Mime Festival. And this festival presents a wide array of performances by hundreds of performing artists. Artists, not just mimes, but a lot of people come here and perform. And these include mimes, but also、uh, various music performers, dancers. There's a lot of installation art, and of course, some short films, which is great. Another festival that rolls its way through Chuncheon is the Puppet Festival. So if you like different kinds of puppets, whether it be marionettes or, or large form puppets, there is a festival that goes through here. and And、it's great fun for the entire family. There's also the Maguksu Festival,、uh, the festival celebrating the buckwheat noodles from Chuncheon. And there's even an animation festival that takes place during the summer. But coming up in July is v- one very special, very special festival, and that's the Taekwondo International Championships. Now, What's important to think about here is that Taekwondo is the national martial art of Korea. It's where it was founded. And this international championship only takes place every other year. So during this special championship festival, practitioners of Taekwondo from around the world come to Korea and they demonstrate their skills. In Chuncheon. It is fantastic. Now, the championships are categorized into three different divisions. You have the ability to see the contestants participate in their different skill sets, and it's a lot of fun. And it's going to be taking place in July. So, if you love martial arts, if you enjoy seeing competition, this is probably one of the more unique ones that you can actually. Visit and see, and you kind of cheer people on it because one of the things that I think makes martial arts very interesting is is that you see individuals who learn the same material, they they get to incorporate it into their life, and then they get to compete in, in something that is uniform. And I think that's one of the reasons why in the Olympics, Taekwondo has enjoyed such a great. Reception and a great history over the past decade or so because it is a very exciting art. And when you watch teams and schools move through the different forms, it becomes just an impressive、uh, nonverbal display of art because you see 20, 30 people moving through the forms. It's just amazing. So, those are some of the things that are taking place in. 
Chuncheon this summer and throughout the year. So if you haven't made a decision on what you want to do this summer, hopefully that will steer you up north. So that's all the time I have today. I'll be back tomorrow with a little bit more. Hey, everyone. Hope you're doing great. It is Thursday. That means the end of the week is almost here. And I got to tell you, I am already looking forward to my weekend excursions and where I want to go and what I want to see and more importantly, what I want to eat. But today when we're talking about Chuncheon, there is one temple that has become, well, I would say more known than anything else in the area in terms of the various temples that are out there. And that is Changpyeongsa or Changpyeong Temple. Now, this temple became well, more prominent once the Soyang Dam and waterway was constructed in 1973. And it's only a 30-minute walk from the dock, and the temple stands on the southern ridge of Mount Obangsan. And the temple was originally built in 973. Now, just think about that. A thousand years before the dam was built, that is when the temple was first constructed. So it already has a thousand year history. And it was built during the reign of King Guangzhong and the Koro dynasty. And it has been open and closed from time to time based on de- different national conditions. But today, it's still there and still going strong. Now, during the Korean War, Gung Guangzhong and Sa Sun Jun of the temple were lost. But the Chungpyong Sa, which is a revolving door, is still there and it's listed as treasure number 164. And this symbolizes the transmigration of souls into the afterlife. Now, near Chungpyong Temple is also located Chungpyong Valley, which is known for its clean water and a beautiful waterfall by the name of Gusong. And it's known to make nine different sounds. And I think that is inherently beautiful and one of the reasons to go to the temple because temples in Korea are typically located in or around some water near a mountain, in this case, Obangsan. And one of the reasons why they are so peaceful is because they are built in harmony with nature with the surrounding and this particular waterfall as the water descends as it as it hits the different rocks as it hits the basin at the bottom makes these different sounds and it's just fantastic now uh, along the path there there's also an artificial pond called yanji and there are three big stones in this pond and between the stones there are a lot of different reeds that were planted there to reflect the pasture area on the mountain itself and it's just beautiful it's one of the best relaxing places to go so if you're doing a little hiking and you want to see a beautiful mountain temple, this is surely one of them to go out and seek and find. Now, there is also a three-story pagoda at the temple, and there's a little bit of a myth attached to it. Now, once there was a man, so the myth goes, who loved a princess, and she was killed. Uh, he was born, and well, he was he killed, actually. He, he was born again as a snake and stuck to the princess and would not get off. The princess then went to the various famous temples of the day to pray for the snake to leave her. And then finally one day, she came to Chungpyosa. And after holding a very special Buddhist ceremony, the snake finally left her. And on that spot, that is where the three-story pagoda was built. And it's just above this waterfall, so it provides just a beautiful area of the town. So that is all I have today. If you want to see a very spectacular view, this is one of my highly recommended places to visit in Korea. So make sure you check it out. I'll be back tomorrow one more day to talk about Chunjan. So I will see you tomorrow. Ah, it is Friday. What a glorious day. And unfortunately, that also means it's the last day to talk about Chunchan. So what I thought I would do today is give you a few, uh, I guess, destinations to go seek out. Because one of the things that's nice about heading up to Chunchan is that there is literally so much to do. So if you go up for a festival or if you go up to see Nami-san, 
You can actually spend an entire day there and kind of devote your time between different actions. You can go hiking. You can go enjoy the scenery. You can have some great food. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about some of the other things to do here. Now, Jungdo is one of, I guess, three main islands formed as a result of of the construction of the Uyam Dam. And that is about, oh, one and a half kilometers from downtown. And many residents use the island as an everyday getaway. It's like some of the parks I see here in Seoul where you have this luscious green space and you're in the urban environment and you just have to get away from everything. You've got to Put the everyday grind behind you. So they come out to the island and just enjoy it. A lot of times students often enjoy class trips here. And it's also been known to help archaeologists learn more about Korea's past because bronze and iron age items were unearthed here, including some burial grounds and uh, an old styled adobe, uh, not adobe, but adobe from many years ago. The island has a large wide grass area and some pedestrian and bike paths as well as some camping grounds. So if you're looking for a nice place to camp overnight, you can do that here. Uh, there are some bicycle and badminton equipment available for rental. So if you're looking for a great place to play during your picnic games or if you want to ride around the island, it's a great place to do that. And uh, in the, I guess, uh, the colder months, you can actually do a little ice skating in the area. But during the summer months, which is what we're coming up to, they even have some water skiing and other boating activities available for you. So it's a lot, a lot of fun. There's actually some other resorts in the area that also make for a, a lot of fun activities as well. And one of them is the Gong Chichon Resort at the end of the Gong Chichon Bridge. And this is where you will find the street of gold scales. And it's a themed street based on one of the very popular novels by Iwe Su. And it is entitled Huang Gum Binul, The Gold Scales. And it kind of reflects a lot of his views. Uh, he was a native of Chuncheon and drew much of the inspiration from the book from the area around where the street is now located, specifically the stream. And using two locations as the settings in his best-selling novel, Huang Gum Binul, they really wanted to celebrate him coming from the town and the author's literary works. Now, it's not just a place of interest for scholars in the area. It's also a favorite among nature lovers. The Ring Road walkway by the lake is a favorite spot for weekend excursions. And there's also a nearby sculpture park, some fountains, a ferry boat, and of course, a lakeside park. Now, from time to time, on the performing stage, you'll actually see some musical acts and some other people take the opportunity to stand up and share their talents with those enjoying the park. Now, there are a lot of other things to do there. Uh, there's a, a monument to King Junjo the Great, a war memorial, as well as a children's hall. And even a memorial dedicated to the Ethiopians who participated in Koreans' defense during the Korean War. So there's a lot to do. Uh, another thing located nearby is the Soyang Dam, and it is a rock dam. But what's interesting about this particular dam is that it is the largest one of its type in Asia. So that is Chuncheon for this week. I'll be back next week with more to see and do around Korea. Hope you have a great weekend, and I will talk to you soon.
Ladies and gentlemen, that will just about do it for this week's podcast. Thank you so much for joining me this week. Now, if you liked it, I would appreciate it if you popped on over to iTunes and logged in and leave a comment and rate it. It's one of the ways that the podcast can grow and get featured. And if you know of anyone else who likes traveling in South Korea or is interested in East Asian news, please share the podcast with them if you think that they would find it helpful. Now, if you have any feedback for me, please drop me a line at podcast at chiranger.com. But until next time, remember to be true to yourself and always be awesome. The Chi Ranger podcast is written and produced by Steve Miller and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derives 3.0 Unported License. Take Me Away's theme song, Morning Blue, was written and performed by Josh Woodward.